In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at methods and creating our own methods here within Visual C Sharp. And so to begin with, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to make a project here to actually do uh, conversion of units of measurement in the English uh, measurement system. So we're going to go ahead and just call this one um, measurement conversion. And I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And to start this one off, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of objects here on my form to work with. Starting off, I'll throw a button on here. I don't need that. I'm going to need a list box. I'll throw a label on here as well, yeah, as well as a text box for some input. And I'll go ahead and use what I've got now. So the label, we're just going to go ahead and change the text property of the label just to say uh, enter number of inches. And I'll give my text box a name to work with. Call this one txt inches. Give my button a name. I'll just call this one cmd calc. And we're going to go ahead and give that a name or a text value. There we go. And I'll give my list box a name as well. Just call this one lst output. There we go. So those are my objects I'm going to work with on my form. So let's go ahead and start our application. And basically what I want to do is I want to make it so that they enter in the number of inches to start with. And once they enter in the number of inches, we're going to go ahead and convert it to feet as well as inches. And so that'll be our first measurement is feet to inches, our feet and inches here, whatever they enter into our text box. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the calculate button. And so far, what we've been doing in our code, we've just basically been creating a method for a click event for our, our buttons. And you can see right here, one was created for us. And in future videos, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to make our own. But uh, in this video, we've just basically been using the methods that were already pre-created pre for us based on our actions on our form. So what we're going to look at doing is creating some additional methods, something similar to what we have here but our own methods that we can use for our own blocks of code. And after a while of writing code, you may find that your code ends up being something that repeats over and over again. You may need that same block of code. And so it would make sense to make your own method and then just call that method whenever you need that code to work. And so we're going to take a look at that as we go through here. So I'm going to start off here by creating a simple method that's going to be for our goodbye message and for the closing of our application. So what I'll look here is this is a this is a method here and I can go ahead and click on the uh, minus sign to collapse that and I've got one here as well. And so what I've got now what I'm working with you can see that's been collapsed and that's been collapsed and you can see now get a better look at what our form looks like uh, as far as our class is concerned. This is our class and so this is where all, within the class where our methods are going to be contained. And so I'm going to go ahead and create myself a new method. Now it's very easy to do. In fact, all we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and create it down below my uh, click event method. And there we go. I'll give myself some space between the opening and ending curly brace. And let's go ahead and create our, our new method. It's really easy to start with. I've got two words to start with. I've either got public or I've got private. And so I can do public or private. And I'll just explain the difference between the two. Public means that this method can be called from outside of our class. So basically, if I've got more than one form or more than one class that I'm working with in my application, I can use public and make that accessible to anything else that I've got written in my code outside of my class. Private, however, I go ahead and do private. Private is very similar to public, except for the difference is it's everything within my class can use this. And so that's the difference as far as the scope of my method, uh, the usability of my method. By default, if I don't type anything to start this off with, it's going to be private. So I'll just go ahead and create private for now. And this is going to be my first one. And we'll go ahead and continue here with our next part, which is going to be whether I want static or, or non-static. And sometimes you'll see it written static. And basically, the static versus non-static refers to how the method can actually be called as well as what um, whether or not I can use some of the objects on our form. The default is going to be non-static so if I didn't have anything there it would actually just say it would be non-static and so for most of the methods I'm going to be creating they're actually actually going to all be non-static so I'm not going to type that keyword in. It's an optional one. I don't need to have it just because the default 
is non-static and that will allow us to use the objects on our form by having it non-static within my method. So I'm just going to leave that there um, not typed in. The last part is whether or not it's going to return something um, within my method and to start with this first one is going to be void. And you'll see void a lot of times written on our methods and that just basically means it's not going to return a value out. Basically it's not going to hold a value in memory when the method runs that can be used uh, for basically another method or for some kind of calculation. And so void just means, and later on we'll do a video on um, how to return values back out of a method, but for right now we're going to just leave it private void. And so that's just going to let us know that it needs to, uh, it's not going to return anything. This is required. Um, having the void or having a data type that's going to be returned out of there is required. Now private I said is not, so just the void is all I really needed to get this going here. Um, but I'll leave private in there just to let us know that we're, all, we're using it within our class and it's a good habit to type that in. So private void and then now what I want to do is type in the name of the method that I want to have. And a lot of times methods start with a verb basically because they're an action doing something. So most programmers do start it off with a verb. It does have to start off with a letter or an underscore. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is I'll give this one a method uh, to say um, close goodbye. And that's what I'm going to call this one. Close my application and goodbye. And what we'll need to do after we give it a name is we need to have the opening and closing uh, parentheses. So this is the start of my method. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I need to have some curly braces. I'll just space down here and give myself some curly braces. And you'll see now that it's formatted uh, as far as tablature is concerned, it's tabbed in uh, like my other methods. And so this is the beginning. I have no code in here for my method. So let's go ahead and write some uh, code. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick message box. Message box dot show. And I'm just going to go ahead and show the text. Goodbye. And so that'll pop up. And then that's our first part of it. It's just to say a uh, quick little text box pops up. Message box pops up and says goodbye whenever we close our application. And then I need to go ahead and click, quit my application. So this is going to just type in application dot there we go exit and that'll close my application for us and so it's going to do two different things now this code can be called from any other method within my class because it's private so let's go to a different method I'm going to go ahead and collapse this one and let's open up my method now it doesn't make sense for us to close our application whenever we click um, on our calculate button so I'll just go to my form real quick I'm going to go ahead and copy this, control C, control V, there we go. And let's just go ahead and change the text, this button to say quit, or you could say finished, there we go, finish would be better. And then let's go ahead and change the button name to CMD finish, there we go. So let's double click on this and you'll see that I've now got a method for the CMD finished click event and let's just call our goodbye. I'll expand that out there. So I want to use this code and this method within this method. So whenever somebody clicks CMD click or CMD finished click, I want to use this code. So how we'll do this is just basically to start typing it in. Close and you'll notice it says goodbye is already there and then our parentheses and this is going to run all of the code that I have within this method and so in this case if I want to later on I can actually just keep reusing this if I have other buttons on other forms uh, now I've, I've got to have everything within my class if I made this public I could use it outside of my class but if I have other objects that I want to have use this um, I can basically reuse this code as many times as I want without actually having to write it all out. Now this is a really short one, but imagine this is actually um, 100 lines of code. Instead of having to copy and paste those 100 lines of codes every time, I can just keep calling that method over and over again and it will run those lines of code for us. And so this is our first look at creating ourselves our own method and calling it in a different ap application. So let's go ahead and I'll run this. 
And so here we go. If I go ahead and hit finished, you'll see the goodbye and it will close my application. And so all that happened just by hitting the uh, or running the close goodbye method. So this concludes the video on our first method where we can actually create a method and call the method to be used within our form.